This first episode of the Rabbit Season podcast was recorded on July 26th before we heard the news about our brother Rec passing. I want to say rest in peace. Thank you for your contributions to hip hop, not only yourself, but the Unity Project. Thank you for always being a supporter of the B-Side Show platform. We appreciate that, man. I'm always going to have memories of seeing you at live shows. Uh, I want to ask anybody that can contribute, if you can, um, go to the GoFundMe link. It's under Rec One Unity Project or on the B-Side IG. Um, the link is in the bio. You can go there and donate as well. Condolences to the family, especially his little daughter, The Bean. And I want to dedicate this first show of the Rabbit Season podcast to the homie Rec One. Rest in peace, my brother. Yes, welcome to episode one of the Rabbit Season podcast. I'm Rabbit, formerly known as Silly Rabbit. I'm I'm gonna be your host. Oh yeah, my name is Shay Shay Whitey. I'll be the producer, um, and I'll make I have a you know a few contributions here and there. Yeah, he'll be doing a few things, you know, like providing sound, you know, <laughs> a camera so we could film. But anyways, that's the role we d- we decided to approach it on with, uh, you know, um, I'll be the main host and then uh, the co-producer and the, the host and is going to be chiming in and he'll have an, his own segment as well. And then shout out to uh, DJ Eclipse as well. He's going to be uh, co-producing as well. So this is going to be good, man. It's been a long time coming. Uh, we've been had this plan for I can say a few years already now Um, we probably didn't have the name of it yet uh, but I did we did know that I was going to venture off solo from the b-side I'm still doing the b-side show but um, this is going to be more exclusive in-depth interviews and you know uh, like I said things have happened in between that have postponed it we've moved I've had car problems I've had you know a range of things just like everybody else uh, real life but we decided uh what better day than today today is my birthday Woo! i'm about a hundred years old today and, uh, been a since it started pretty much and uh but yeah we decided to start it on my birthday so there's no more postponing it's on it's now official live and direct rabbit season podcast man in full effect every single we're looking to uh what we say Shay? we're looking to drop it on uh thursday, thursday mornings yeah it should be ready by the time you wake up you'll, you'll it will be actually it'll be uploaded and ready for you know to listen by thursday morning you know and if you can't listen in the morning it's up the whole you know the rest of the time the weekend whenever you have time yeah whenever you have time this will be pre-recorded on like the b-side show um but pretty much we're kind of approaching it almost like a Thursday type morning show. But um, just because the way we're going to approach the content and the interviews and and the stuff we do uh, post-production because um, we got a lot of things planned on that, too. So, like I said, this has been in the works for a while. Uh, we ain't new to this. I know there's thousands of podcasts out right now. That's all good. We got our own lane that we're hoping to fill. And I hope people... Um, support um you know because uh, again uh, we go through our ups and downs we're almost at our 10-year anniversary for the b-side show and and uh you know a lot of times it gets discouraging with lack of what what i feel should we should have some more support on sometimes but um like my brother reminds me other people remind me that um we need to just focus on the ones that do support the ones that are looking for that avenue or that hip-hop entertainment style podcast um, and we'll concentrate on that and go from there, man. Yeah, and just to let you know too, um, we're, it'll be available on Spotify, um, Spotify, and also SoundCloud. And then we'll be adding more platforms later. But it will also be available on YouTube, and YouTube will be on the B Side channel. But the other uh, audio will be on actual the Rabbit Season podcast. So you know we're not much to look at, but we have a pretty dope <laughs> set here. <laughs> the set, just yeah, concentrate set. on the set. <laughs> Um, real quick um, you know for people that might not know because I, th- I know there's a lot of people and shout out to them uh, that are listening or a lot of people that we know from way back uh, a lot of people that know us from the b-side show or even from way before that even like childhood friends you know they're going to be tuned in so shout out to them but in case uh, you know there's people that's tuned in you know that maybe that not know who you are just let them know uh, you know how far you go back with hip-hop and uh, what it is that first you know made you fall in love with hip-hop like was it a certain song was it a certain tape or what was it? You know, um, 
I, I'm pretty much the age of hip hop, so you know, I've I heard things like before I got completely submerged in it, even as a real youngster, and that's because, you know, in those days, um, like I even start you 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 remember Shay and Shay Shay knows, but um, I I've been kind of pretty independent since I was a little kid, you know, <laughs> even as far as. Uh, I used to walk to kindergarten myself, and this I'm not even lying about that. I had the PM class. My mom had to go to work, single most of the time single mom raising us. And, uh, you know, I went by what was on TV, and I knew that was when it was time to go to school. And I, it was down the street. It wasn't like I walked 10 miles. But still, you know, those things are, uh, you know, pretty unheard of, especially nowadays. But, you know, so I've always kind of done my own thing. But... I gravitated, um, you know, people around the hood where we, we we would spend half our time with our dad, half our time with our mom. And when we were with our dad at the time, he w- they were living in Carson. And so many different ethnicities there, um, you know, Pacific Islanders, black, Mexican, Asian, um, you know, white, everything. And um, we, I, I kind of started, you know, of course, break dancing. And that's kind of what led into the first wave of it. You know, um, but I remember one of my birthdays, I, I got some money and I went, I had, uh, I think dad took me to uh, get, I got a, I think it was a Fat Boys tape and then it was Run DMC Raising Hill, I believe it was. And um, yeah, that's pretty much where I was, I was all the way in because yeah. that, I I mean, especially, you know, shout out to the Fat Boys too, when it, you know, important for the culture, but I that run dmc is what really grabbed me you know from the beats the scratching the back and forth between the mcs um and uh, and it kind of that that tone of sucker mcs you know they even had a song called that you 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 remember eclipse eclipse knows what i'm talking about but um that kind of um i guess the uh uh what is that the uh, the battling not the battling but the uh What's the word I'm looking for here? But the, uh, the competition. Competition. There you go. I don't know why I couldn't think of That's that. That's why I'm here. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> he just earned his. He just earned his paycheck. Marijuana One extra blunt in this week's envelope. No, but uh, uh, yeah, the competition part of it is like, you could still be. Everybody's cool, but it's like you. You also want to show like I'm. I'm pretty dope at this, and uh, I want you motherfuckers. So part to see. of it, is, um, yeah, but so because it comes from when you you were interested in the break dancing, but that's and that's the type of music they played with during the break dancing yeah, battles and yeah. all. I remember like the with all the scratching and all that stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. and then yeah. We, we would watch. Remember the movies like uh, we remember we would go to the movies by ourselves. Like you know, our dad, hey, go ahead, just we would just go with all the neighborhood kids. We would see like Breaking and Beat Street and some of those movies. Like uh, so, I remember just wanting to hear like more hip hop music because of that too. And I re- I remember even yeah, dude, and walking as far as uh, the original Bad Boys movie with Sean Penn and Isai oh, yeah, Morales. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like people, you gotta all go. These rated R movies. All the youngsters, movies. you're gonna have to go search that one real quick. But yeah, not the Will Smith. The yeah, not movie. way, before, yeah, way that. before that. But we literally walked to the movies in a pack with you know young, you know we were still in elementary Went school. To school that way too. Walked to school. That yeah, way. but the thing was is why we were able to do that is because there was so many of us it was like we were our own little pack and we we mo- for the most part got left alone but that's because we rolled deep as youngsters just going everywhere but yeah to go into that that's that's kind of what started at break dancing um the competition aspect of the rhymes um so i've always been about lyrics and then later on you know it 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 moved um to different things i remember even the same spot when we were over there uh, Boys in the Hood came out as a, it, it was like a bootleg version of it, um, where everybody was just like dubbing it. And this was when there there wasn't CDs. Like, we had to dub it off cassettes. Oh, I remember like, that hearing that and, when you cassette had. tapes. And I remember that going around and the Boys in the Hood and dude, that just being so hard. Like, because it was some stuff that we can more relate to because we seen it. We literally seen that going, you know, up and down the street, walking wherever we were going. But um, we got to see that firsthand, and that was that was before the official Easy E or NWA actually was on the label and came out. So that's crazy. That's yeah. history. Hey, you know what's funny about that story? Because I remember when you had that tape, and um, I remember at the time, um, 
our mom, you know, she was dating this hit, like hardcore heavy metal dude. Uh -huh. I don't know if you remember him, like uh -huh. he was like long hair, heavy metal dude. And so, but even he, like he did, never listened to hip hop at all. You know, one of those people probably wouldn't listen to it. And, and, and he listened to that and he was like, oh, hell yeah. He was all into it. Like, <laughs> like him and his, his heavy metal friends are like, even like that, like transcended like, like different genres of music. I remember at the time. Oh like, yeah. That was a long time ago though. Like, I, I remember going to, you reminded me of something else. I went to a, a concert, um, uh, back in the day, dude, and it was with uh, with uh, the homie. Shout out Tootie. He's still the homie to this day. But this is fuck, dude, like 30 years ago or something. Mm -hmm. We went to NWA with Easy e I think Ice-T was there. Um, shit. I forgot who else. And I talked to uh, one of the times when uh, DJ Yellow was here, man, the legend. Oh, yeah. Shout um, out. Yeah. And, uh, I, and, and he told me the name. I, I still forget the name of the venue, but it used to rotate in a 360 circle. And so all the crowd could see throughout, but they just kept performing. And it would be like, sometimes they're right in front of you. Sometimes they're looking the other way. Um, but I remember, bro, just dope, dope uh, vibes. Even though at the time there was a lot of gang violence going on, uh, bloods and crips and all that stuff when colors came out, all that stuff. But I remember there was a lot of different fights and security handled pretty good. There was a couple of you know people were shooting and that, that i think most of that happened outside but yes we were there and we were like in junior high or something i think yeah. and uh and the homie's big brother took us and i remember seeing like look to me look like cowboys bro like yeah. rocking out bro like <laughs> like at the time we were youngsters these guys look like they, they look like 30s or 40s yeah. bro i'm not even <laughs> playing rocking out bro in the front singing along the words and all that shit and <laughs> and then i remember outside the homie's brother's car broke down yeah. and it was like uh it was like a push it was a stick shift so it wouldn't start so we were gonna push start it but he didn't want to do it in front of everybody so we like literally waited most of the people left and uh coming out uh while we were actually pushing the car we seen <laughs> uh uh david faustino walk out like oh, yeah. he was homies with Bud all them Bundy. yeah uh you know hardcore hip-hop hit oh yeah dude, grandmaster uh, grandmaster b from you know, but yeah, he's still doing his thing, I believe, with this podcast and yeah. all that. But yeah, those are just random stories, bro. Like the shit we've well, been. Well, I remember. Through. What about even before that? Like, I think you were younger than that. What about when you, um, with your your friend, um, your friend Brooks? Remember, wasn't it him that you guys uh, entered like a break dancing competition or something like that? Hmm. Like you guys were like spinning like in some kind of gym or something. I, th I remember I was a little kid, but I remember like going. I don't think it was him because was it? I forgot he, he, he wasn't very good at it. Was it Duty? <laughs> I, I don't remember. He wasn't very good. No, I don't remember who it was. I believe that is when like, see the second half for those that don't know, we lived on like the, the Harbor. Area. Yeah, like, no, nah, not Harbor area, more of the South Bay area yeah. um, side, for like the first part of our lives, and then we kind of been in the SGV side for the rest and. And uh, this is when we were already, I think we moved around a lot, obviously, having a single mom. We had to do what we had to do. We moved house to house a lot, which is, you know, and this is to go into who I am is, you know, this is why I feel like we adapt to kind of most of our environments is because we have moved so many times and we had no choice but to adapt. So, yeah, that's for sure. um, yeah so anyways, yeah, with that being said, I think that was uh, Baldwin Park at the time we lived there and uh it was a break dancing. Oh, comp. that's yeah. where it was. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. And those so were the times too. Like I, I was clearly overmatched, bro. Like, <laughs> no, I mean, I was pretty good, but at the time, like, Hey, these dudes had, four, and I was like, dude, I remember the time. And I was like, the time limit was long and I didn't have that many things to go. And I was like, dude, what the fuck dude? So I had to like repeat moves. And I remember cats were like getting scared, not going in. Yeah. They would do like 30 seconds and walk off. Like oh, they just couldn't they handle it. butterflies. I guess, bro. But at least I finished my shit. Threw dude. up on their sweater. <laughs> I, I left it. My mouth was dry as shit, dude. I remember that. But I did my thing. And at least, you know, yeah. I have been in competitions. I've been, you know, I've freestyled against cats and parties. And back in the day when we used to use the headphones as, as mics when you had no audio and, uh, for, I mean, for mic and, uh, and uh, yeah, later on, as we we got into it, I was super hip hop head, and ended up, of course, somehow, you know, obviously started writing my own shit. And so um, yeah, so I was gonna ask, so yes, yeah, let him know, like, so around this is the one when you're after high school when you start getting, so like, talk about like uh, when did you first like decide you wanted to actually do music, like record it and write it and go to a studio and do all that. Like, what was it that made you like all of a sudden like? 
because I knew you used to like rap and do your own, like you know, messing around. But when you actually wanted to get in there and like, yeah, do that that CD was and everything. That's the part that some people don't get, and and it's like you could, you go go to these hip hop, you know, or show whatever they are, backyard parties, whatever they might be. But um, when people start freestyling and going in, like it's one thing to get on the mic and say whatever, and you're high, buzz, whatever. But yeah, to take it seriously and actually. I was always good at writing in school, so um, and then I've always been a fan of lyrics in hip hop, so I always chose to, to uh, you know that was my thing. Is the beats is cool. I always respect the DJ and the beats is dope. But I thought MCs always should have done more justice sometimes to yeah. some people's songs and at least concentrate a little more on the lyrics. Yeah, and that's why like yeah. you notice people that have actual vocabulary and have like you know yeah, uh, yeah. Li- you know uh, you know and smart in in certain ways you know like where they can put more words together you know it's it's one thing that groove out to the beat and like you know some people are good at they're just on beat, but they're not really saying a whole lot of different words it's just kind of like yeah like, but that's that was the difference i remember you were like actually wanted to bring that like like actually write the, write it out and actually get in the studio like for like hooks uh, and everything, some of the studios bro. that i remember like in the di- like back in the day it was like w- starting out like but yeah, let somebody's know, so restrooms. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, hey, dude. Yeah, we've been makeshift studios, but yeah. One of the other things to go along with your question is um, that made me actually, I guess, take it serious uh, to that extent is that also the other homie. Shout out to Drac. He's actually still one of the partners uh, here with us on the the B side studio, and um, he started actually getting a. He got a beat machine. And then I was like, hell yeah, like, okay, now I have beats at at my disposal, like, because he wanted to get in and do music. So it was like uh, me and him were the first kind of, I guess, to take it that serious. And then a couple other homies that used to rap. Shout out to Sick Vic. Sick Vic, (laughs) a.k.a. One Shot. Sick Vic, though, man. He's still the homie, too, and we go way back. He's actually our neighbor now, for those that don't know. And, and, And we'll get into this later, but... He's still got, like, him and there's a couple other people I can name. They have the best stories, bro. Like, oh, yeah. All you got to do is listen to, like, what'd you do this weekend? And whatever you did is nothing in comparison, I guarantee. It might have to be a new segment on the podcast later. Yeah. yeah well, stay tuned. <laughs> yeah, Sick Vic's Weekend or some yeah, shit yeah. like that. Hey, but him and then uh, uh, Drac, of course, myself, uh, we put out a, a project. And then the next project. Um, another homie that I knew, I recruited him to join the group, and he was part of the group after that. Uh, CIA, uh, the homie Eric, Eric you yeah, know what I mean? But Eric, shout out to him because also his big brother, rest in peace, DJ Boogeyman, yeah, peace, DJ was Boogeyman. one of the B-side uh, DJs. So that was that was dope. But yeah, we got in the lab once I knew someone else was serious. Then we started actually renting studio time and making music and putting cds out i put a solo one out i still got more music that i never put out that i might just throw out just for people that want to bump something you know that fuck it dude some people don't like to pay for it, so i'll give them a free cd you know hey, during that time so <laughs> do you remember um so how like were you guys um because i remember then you then you guys started doing the shows like with the group and then even some so how, how did you do you remember how like your first one or, or how you started getting the shows or did you start booking them yourself or was somebody helping you oh uh, well first um that was around the time when social media kind of first started i guess you could say like myspace days oh and yeah shit like MySpace. that there was, there was no instagram or yeah no nah, nothing like, nothing yeah. like you couldn't that you could even really use your phone for apps nah. you had to go on your pc or your laptop and uh my, and most of the time still before that when we were putting music out it was all it was kind of still before that because we were still going and actually selling it going to swap meets and and different ways and going to record stores and asking them to listen to put it in their store on consignment and mm-hmm. we did a lot of work bro like that people don't know about that but and i'm glad you asked because people might not know that like i've really been in this shit for a long ass time before even hosting which we'll get to oh, yeah because even like remember how um now everybody can make their own cd covers they could do all that at home now with the with the technology back then they didn't have that you had to find somebody to like to do that for you to design for you to print uh even something simple like a cd cover or whatever it was yeah yeah so we started doing everything ourselves yeah drac even designing but renting studio time and all that and uh and i think our very first show was like at a uh man it was a was it a car show or something but it was oh, like that's right it yeah. was like mainly like christian based and all oh, our yeah. all our shit was pretty <laughs> like raunchy and pretty we didn't vulgar. know ahead of time so we didn't like 
you know, and, and we tried our best to edit stuff out during the performance, but bro, it was mad. Like I was like all nervous working up to it. Cause I get like that anyways, even up to hosting a show. It's just because I care about it enough <coughs> that I get that way because I want to, and, and I, I usually perform better that way. So, but yeah. And, and, um, and you're in your, you guys were in your early twenties and all that. So like you think about what the content's going to be, you know, oh, early yeah. 20 single, all that, like, just the, yeah, the content was pretty. Uh, it was <laughs> pretty out there. We ended up to to cut it. You know, <laughs> we ended up not finishing our set because that you know we had to get we were a little too much for the crowd there. But uh, yeah, so that was a good like uh, learning set, bro. Because but after that, like I literally started like I would talk to people everywhere. We'd go to events like uh, events where other performers were yeah. were pass our flyers out, our CD samplers. Uh, or uh, fuck yeah it was cds all the, at that time um i was gonna say yeah we weren't we when we were putting music there was cd access already and uh we were passing stuff out and i just started just chopping it up with so many different people uh, artists um even people that would come up and su like supporters they would come up and go bro you got down like you got down in your lyrics like i, I like that shit or different things some people would yeah. relate to i guess and and i said oh fuck dude this is what it's about right here and uh just all those contacts led to more shows and more shows and more shows so it's yeah, so, like i was there i remember all this but i'm just you know just for people that might not know like what like the kind of stuff we went through but uh you remember also too even um like the networking you're talking about this had to be done uh actually going places all the time it's not like now People can f see somebody on Instagram. They could just DM them and go, "Hey, let's work or whatever." But like, this is remember, like, uh, tell them what about Steak Night? Remember Steak Night? Wasn't that like oh, that was a yeah. big networking event? Shout out to all that? them, man. Uh, Kiki, man. Uh, uh, Tony G. Uh, all of them that used to put that together, and that was an, a weekly networking event, and it was on Monday nights, bro. Um, and I remember it was a, it was purposely done on Monday nights. And so that was kind of why we, when we first created B-Side Show, which we'll get to in a while because I want to shout all those guys out that created it with us. But uh, before we created it, um, that's kind of one of the reasons we ended up making it on a Monday night is kind of in honor of Steak Night. But, man, it was a good networking event. A lot of artists that were putting their music out would just go, like, chop it up, yeah. support each other. And get a chance to perform. If other, Yeah, well, that started later. At first yeah. it was in venues where you couldn't. Oh. They were, it was in a restaurant to start off, and mm -hmm. then it moved to, like, a bar, and then we were able to do performances. But it was a place you could perform in front of your peers, chop it up with your peers. You can invite them to your next show. You can show them your new music. It was a really cool event because to this day, I'm still homies with a lot of them cats. Yeah. You and know it's what dope I mean? to see a lot of them cats are, are still doing their thing, oh, too. Oh, yeah, yeah, Still doing dope music. Like, you know, I link, like, I've done shit with, like, Kid Frost, like, fucking, uh, Dude, I think I first met in person Sick Jack in there. Um, who else? Julio G, right? Julio G, uh, Tony G. Yeah, like, Tony G. I think I knew him before, but like that's when we first started becoming homies. And like, I consider. I think uh, Kool Aid, right? It was in Kool Aid at one of them. I or think something? she was there yeah. too. Like, yeah, dude, a lot of, a lot of dope artists. Uh, Chino XL too. Yeah. Like, uh, Mellow Man Ace. Like a, a lot of cats, dog. That, you know, we looked up to. Like, I, I bought these guys cassettes and cds yeah. and and uh and then i was able to link with these cats and I, like i still got cool relationships with mostly all of those people you know and shout out some of them will probably be on the rabbit season podcast oh, for soon. sure yeah, yeah they, I mean. got, they got stories to tell us for sure yeah, for hey, sure hey, um uh, so before we get into like when you started hosting and all that though um what was your do you remember like can you remember like which one of all the shows you performed which one was your favorite you're, like can you can you think it I don't know. Um, I don't know. I can't really think of a favorite because to me, real talk, they were all fun be in their own ways because like I, I, I know we always reach different people and audience than we probably initially thought th uh, that we would. Um, but also just being in an environment which we've always liked. I know you feel the same way, Shay, but like when we can be around cats that are making like you, you get to be in a place you know, whatever, drink a brew, whatever, get high, listen to some good music with other people that have the same mentality as you that just want to, you know, like have a good time and listen to music and, and, um, and, and stuff like that. So those were always fun for us, but I, I, I will say one of them that was like at least super funny is, is shout out to these homegirls too, man. We still know some of them, but, um, 
uh we went to a show like mobbed it deep like you know shout out to mob deep too that was like you know no pun intended there but shout out <laughs> but we literally mobbed deep like with the homies and, and, and uh, chicks and everything bro like a good we had a good turnout to go to the show we rocked the set um there was a lot of other dope performers it was one where i, I forgot who the headliner was um but man we we got down we had a good time bro and i remember outside the party continued like the place was closing i don't know if you remember this shit uh, was it uh green turtle yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> I remember it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. The Green Turtle. Dude, we used to have some good shows there, man. Shout out to the homie Danny Boy, too, man. He used to throw some of the events there. Yeah. Danny Boy Promotions. Yeah, Danny. Uh, and uh, outside, somebody was bumping in their car. Next thing you know, like, the crowd that we rolled with made our own party outside in the middle of the <laughs> street right there, outside the venue. And, uh, and uh, they were dancing on cars and chicks were on top of the cars and all of a sudden everybody came out and they're like filming with their little camcorders and shit whatever they brought to film the show and people like dude we literally made our own show outside that was just funny to me because then after that that mostly the whole party there that we created and a couple of other people that just wanted to go that we were cool with yeah. ended up back at my pad the original rabbit hole yeah. that we called the rabbit hole and it was rabbit a small hole. little pad you know on a little cul-de-sac and man the neighbors they they were just cool with us because we used to have a lot of loud oh, yeah. shit going on over there yeah yeah that was uh too i remember um one of my, ho my homie data shout out to data he had a, he had invited a couple of friends from his work uh, 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 man after that night they were like whoa they probably never been in the, anywhere like that or seen something like that they were tripping out oh this is how you guys party yeah like like, <laughs> yeah and then we were like yeah kind of we do yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we kind of do because at that time we were doing a gang of shows if you remember yeah for sure yeah, uh, well yeah well, one of the things that's what i you know back in those days i was kind of like uh basically like street team and i would help promote and i you know i kind of did what i could to help you know for the computer work because i was i've always been kind of computer savvy so when we tried to remember we did our own cd cover that we went to kinko's and, oh, and all yeah, that stuff yeah, like that yeah. uh, and you know and just promo and different things i would take my camcorder get footage and just you know see what we could do to, to edit it together i started learning uh, video editing with the homie data so um and um but one of my favorite show though i gotta say is um man and and the thing is i don't even know if i have the venue right but i, I think it was in hollywood the it was when all four of you guys, the whole when the whole group performed. Because remember how a lot of times like somebody couldn't make it, it would be three oh, or yeah, two yeah. or whatever. Yeah. All four of you guys, and like I think it was the Key Club or something. Was it, is that one of the ones you guys did, or the not the Key Club? We the, did that. I think we did the what was that other one? The, the Knitting Factory. The, and or it might have been that, that one? one. It could have been, but it, I just remember you guys like like everybody like all of you because you know even sometimes too somebody would end up messing up, forgetting a lyric or here too, <laughs> or get off beat, whatever it was. I just remember everybody. Usually it was sick, man. Yeah, yeah. Right, I, I remember <laughs> even this show, though, like, he did his thing. Everybody did. I just remember that was, like, a proud, like, show that, like, even for me, I was, like, in the crowd with a lot of people came out to watch, too, that we, like, that, that was, like, that was really I dope. think that yeah. one was there, though, because yeah. I remember that we did take a lot of people, too, and and I remember yeah, even the crowd, even the crowd. Oh, and there was one, uh, no, uh. Man, what what was about the other one? Oh, you're talking about House of Blues. House of Blues. That one was, that that's was another fun. one. That's another one with C Blunt and them. This the Blunt Factory. The whole crew. factory crew. Yeah, man. Yeah, we did our thing them. on that one too. Right. Yeah. That was really fun for us because we yeah. did a lot of good songs and everybody got down. I, man. I might still have some of the footage somewhere. I had my camcorder with that too. We even took a limo to the venue. Remember? We, we all jumped in a limo. Whitey has to be careful what he has on that camcorder. Yeah, yeah. yeah let me check it first before I get us in <laughs> trouble, man. So, yeah. So you know. Then shortly after that, I, I kind of, it, it was only, I think it was more of a thing. I'm just drifting into where we went. We ended up yeah. going into the more of the hosting side. I was still doing shows, but I started hosting. And it was, at the time I remember, it was kind of to kind of get more in my own lane. Um, because at the time, so many people were just rap And not that they're not now, but now. And now you see everybody's doing podcasts, everybody. Yeah. And I was kind of trying to just get in my own lane, mm -hmm. which I still think I have. Um, unfortunately, I, I mean, me personally, I don't feel like the none of us uh, that have done any of this stuff have received maybe the true, uh, not recognition, but I guess support. Yeah. Support is the key word because I, we need those views and we need those people to like the, the content we put on our social medias and not if you don't like it, don't like it, but I'm saying, like, at least uh, 
don't be a hater just don't follow us because it's kind of weird you know like if if when we see a lot of people they're you know we get handshakes and love and everything when, when we go places and then the support doesn't seem to be there but anyways you know kind of like i was saying i was kind of going into to that is where i kind of was just trying to find my own lane and then we found some homies which we're still at the spot now um which we'll get into i know you might have a question on it shay but um uh kind of where we drifted how we ended up you know getting into the b-side man yeah if, i mean i remember right at the, around the time like you were uh, starting to host some uh, uh you know we talked about danny boy he was still throwing events i remember you hosted some of his shows i think uh you did that that one with um i think it was uh, uh roscoe uh, uh, over at that spot in pasadena i think mm-hmm. or and then uh who was like I think crazy bone or so you know just some different artists that he was getting over there mac 10 i think yeah, mac different, 10 different cats, uh, yeah. th- but um but yeah, um, well, I'll even get in le- first lead into it, and then you can talk about how it started. But um, I remember you coming to me, like actually coming to me and asking me because I was always trying to help out with the promo and the and the you know the technical side. And uh, you yeah I said you know you talked about about you you know had this meeting talking about doing this uh, this internet show, like and, and this is at the time internet shows were just starting out. This is yeah. like the really new at the time. Oh hell yeah! Like uh, like they even had that thing called stick cam. People might remember where it was like the old school where people were able to broadcast themselves or whatever. I think we started on that. Yeah. yeah. And, and uh, I remember he even, he even came to it like, I'm going to be hosting this uh, new hip hop show on the internet. And you came to, hey, let's help me with some content and let's create con- like some content for me to talk about some funny stuff, some, uh, you know, like different things that we can bring to the thing. And ever since then I've been on board, but yeah, like just tell them. And then, them about and the then remember, and that's kind of how, <coughs> that's a, uh, when we started going to a bunch of events, taking the little camcorder we did have, remember when we would do little behind the scenes, yeah. Shay would edit them, the little editing at the time that he knew, and yeah. we would throw those on the B-side. Start getting people to shout out the show before yeah. it even was out. shout outs. And yeah. Hold on real quick. <laughs> ah, there we go. <laughs> to set it off yeah. that's the only time he's gonna drink a beer during yeah the podcast. you know what only on my <laughs> birthday <yeah. laughs> you know but we're having a good time in here this is the first official episode of the rabbit season podcast thank you guys that are hopefully checking us out man and every week like i said we're gonna have dope guests coming through and when we don't talk about so, yeah. so where were we man yeah we were talking about um how um all right so yeah so i told him about you know like how you, how you told me about the b-side show how it was going to start out um, or what we're going to do and then but the, let them know how it came about like and how that first meeting went and, and you know how, the, how it started basically um yeah the first meeting that um shout out to the homies man uh rocky uh from the street scholars p- podcast yeah, shout out up, to rocky? them what up di- what up dog man they're they're so big right now that i think they even unfollowed me i think i'm not <laughs> i'm not sure but I don't know. I haven't heard from the dude, but hopefully he checks out our show. Um, but yeah, Rocky um, uh, had a had a clothing store here with his partner at the time, um, his lady at the time. They they randomly just went on a whim, got a little spot for clothing, which we're glad that they did, um, which set everything else in motion. But long story short, we ended up making the the backside of the studio into uh, uh, I mean the backside of the store into a studio. Um, started it when he brought in uh the other homie wacko um who's still doing like videos he's actually the direct uh producer of the street scholars now um who else was there phys ed at oh, the yeah, time DJ. DJ was DJ. who was the original dj for uh, the b-side show they were doing another show called zoo radio at the time more like a uh, dubstep type uh you know techno sound music and um they had a different backdrop and everything on the, on the other side we made our own b-side backdrop which still stands um what you guys see is that uh hollywood background that was done um shout outs to the homie homie west 77 and cowboy i believe did that still up yeah. and um so we had a meeting at our favorite meeting spot which was down the street used to be the b back it's a different bar now um but uh you know we used to go there back in the day and um our meetings were always over a few drinks and i remember you know not all of us agreed at the beginning which like most things uh you know not everybody's gonna agree but we came to 
kind of a compromise, I guess you can say. And the B side became what it is with all the ideas that were thrown in. But basically, like uh, what it was supposed to be is a hip hop version of like the Tonight Show style where anybody that's got something new out can come promote their shit, perform live if they wanted. If it had a movie, we'd show a clip, like different things like that. And, you know, show their flyers on the screen and and different things. And again, like Shay said, is it is this was at a time when these were all uh fairly new concepts i mean they had been done but not in the spectrum we were trying to do it um you know and if we had more money and and uh investors behind us which we've done everything independent all these years but if we did you know it would possibly be something bigger than what it is but but you know we'll, we go with what we got you know but even though on that time though you like you said it was not a lot of people were doing it and they weren't around but Dude, honestly, to this day, even though a lot of people are doing, you know, shows and podcasts, yeah. I still feel like the B-Side show like, is, like, uh, it, the most unique and the most, uh, you know, with that for the format that we have with the, you know, the DJ yeah. mix, the, the interview, the live performance, the dope host, you know, all that stuff, the, the, the combination uh, of the show to me. I mean, maybe I'm biased because I produce it, but, <laughs> but uh, you know, I just still think that, like, no, the I format and the concept is still, <laughs> like, you know, one of the only, you know, right now. So I, I agree with you. I just... Again, it, I just was, you know, would hope at all points, and you know, it'll come, it'll come when it comes. But um, just wish the support was greater, um, not only from just hip hop supporters, but from the artists as well, because um, we do support a lot of their things and do things that sometimes we don't have to do and go the extra for some of these people. And you know, it'd be nice if they can do the same, you know. Some of the people, you know, sometimes can't even e- repost the flyer, man. And, you know, that's the that's the minimal thing to expect from someone to help back, you know. But anyways, um, you know, going back, uh, we, we came up with an idea. Um, you know, we all came up with the ideas. Uh, Rocky was a big part of some of the concepts, too. Um, and then Wacko and I were the hosts. We had somebody at the homie, man, the homie Snipes was the original producer. He, Wacko on the fly, just told him, hey, dude, you press this. When we say record, you stop here. And we would literally, like, shout it out to him. And then a couple episodes later, I believe, uh, is that when we got Drac? Yeah. I believe Drac came aboard, started producing it. He really dug the concept and all that. And, um uh, and then uh yeah, speaking of hating yeah, like you know I, I could have like done it right on the flight right there and i was there like getting some behind the scenes footage but yeah wacko was hating on me he didn't want me to like <laughs> take over the thing so yeah but it's all good i i, I got it now so <laughs> yeah and uh but yeah now shay became the producer shortly after that um drax work schedule changed and yeah. he was he was doing more things behind the scenes you yeah know, i will say that um Drac, cre- you know, creating and like, you know, I, I got to give him, you know, like he did like take it to another level as far as like looking into what we could do with the software we're using and all that. So, you know, I kind of like, you know, I picked it up, uh, you know, from them. But after that, I just kind of, you know, I, I just from that, like the technology got better, you know, our equipment got better. And we just, you know. And, and I, then you could kind of see what you would want a show to look like when you're watching exactly, it. Like, yep. you know, and that's what I would want to watch as well. So, um, yeah, everything else uh, went from there. And like I said, uh, you know. Uh, coming November, the first Monday of November, is going to be our 10-year anniversary show. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. We'll give ourselves our own round of applause. Yeah, right there. And, uh, but, yeah, we're going to have our own, uh, our own little, I don't know how we're going to do it yet because things still might be closed down and all that. But um, Either way, we're going to bring something dope because, you know, like we, we have so many like dope DJs and different things that like, you know, and, and this is what we do. We stream now and this is the, f- this is the, the current uh climate what i guess what do you want to call it that we live in you know like you can't really go out to venues and do stuff so you gotta watch streaming events just like they got the live concerts and on you know you gotta watch them online now like the, the k-day concert they had to do online you know so we're doing that's what we're doing you know for uh for we're probably have, you know we might have to be doing that even you know we're already streaming anyway but uh you know we'll just ha- can't open it up to as many people maybe we'll do it outside who knows but just make sure you tune because it's gonna be dope no matter what we do so yeah, and, and uh, you know, uh, one other thing I wanted to get into before we talk about some current things and all that is, is um, you know, one of the things that was important, at least for me, um, which still is on the B-Side show, is is bridging the gap. Like, we've always done a good job, I, I believe, of 
having the young up and coming artists that are doing their thing, that are really pushing, grinding, hustling, putting in the work necessary to get to the next level. The ones that take it serious, in other words, and then um, and then some of the OGs that have been doing their thing for a long time. And we've got to have a lot of a lot of dope cats on the show. And I don't know. I wanted to ask you, Shay, some of your favorite uh, interviews or, or even guests that you got to meet that stand out um like first yeah one of them well there, i mean there's there's a quite a few the ones that stick out like to me would be like um metal world peace of the lakers oh yeah um trey d of the east side is like a big fan of his uh you know what's crazy we just got to meet crooked the other day i mean we haven't got to interview him yet here but um he actually stopped by it was cool meeting him but uh um also um even like afro man it was dope seeing him here um who else um i know that there's some other ones i'm probably drawing a blank oh dj battle cat uh another example um yeah that's yeah we've had we've top. had some legends man uh, frost has been here yeah. uh mellow man ace yeah, uh, of course Razkaz. Razkaz, that's yeah. the homie man the yeah. waterproof mc right there and then like you know the the psycho realm and oh, and yeah. uh Sick uh, uh yeah bro and then and uh who else chino excel uh, we had uh, the delinquent habits here like yeah. you, know, bo- you know both delinquent the bahamid bahamidia was yep. a good interview interview medusa and then some of the you know up and coming at the time were barely starting out pretty much and now they're really you know doing their thing but like reverie um you know who else off top uh we we never got the official people uh, like i suppose yeah and, uh, you know some never got the official rhymatics. interview with uh fora but we did an event with him um we never had to sit down with them but uh who else uh so uh yeah, yeah self-provoked the uh self-provoked you yeah. know uh, the wino and you know people a lot of people that are making a lot of noise you know like namik you know he like yeah like, you know when, when he was like when he was younger you know it's been a while now but he first came through and like uh, like he got to came through and got to chop it up with cocaine and started doing some different people he ended up like working that. with you know yeah, so, like, so bridging the gap's always been important and um and then you know one more thing i wanted to go into before uh you know something that got more serious with me as i started getting into hosting became you know kind of i i enjoy broadcasting and this is what i love doing whether it's talking about sports you know uh, a project um i just feel like you know this is what i'm supposed to be doing and you know i again i'm only gonna roll with the people that they they know i'm good at this shit so fucking haters (laughs) haters you don't gotta say nothing you just keep doing what you're doing and not support i I don't miss it because you don't give that support anyways but um real talk like i really enjoy this and hyping a crowd and being part of the actual entertainment or the production of a whole uh something put on for the people i enjoy being part of that so um you know shout out to uh out the house uh you know who else um just different people that have me host um the psycho realm i've hosted a couple psycho the miles um i got to host you know one of my favorite to this day well i've hosted like mellow man ace uh uh you know again psycho realm kid frost uh div- a bunch of different shows uh but one of my favorites uh we had a good time a couple of them uh alcoholics the defari and planet asia show um and then that that uh big boy from outcast because you know what outcast is um one of basically my probably pretty much i could say my favorite group of all time um I'm just a big fan of, of their music and what they've been able to do together, but also Andre 3000's on another level, uh, too, just lyrically. But, I mean, them as a group is one of the dopest. And then, you know, uh, straight off, since we're on that subject, Shay, and then, like, as far as groups go, um, it's probably Outkast, um, maybe uh, NWA, and then, like, between Dog Pound and Cypress, and then, like, EPMD, bro. Those yeah. are... I mean, those to me are the ultimate hip hop yeah, groups. How, who's some of your favorite MCs, oh, man? For sure, uh, the Dog Pound. Like the, as far as groups go, that's one of my favorite groups. Like Dog Pound, you know, Daz and Corrupt, but even even like the combination of all of them, even you know with Snoop, Superfly, and all all of them, you know, like like that. Oh, Nate Dog, of course, rest in peace. Uh, and yeah, actually, that's another one um, that we, we know how we were talking about people that we've gotten to meet. Um, it was dope. I gotten to meet like some of the, these people that I, like uh, these people's um, sons or. Or, you know, like 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 Easy E's son's been through here, or uh, Nate Dog's son's been through here. Uh, you know, like M- met, uh, DJ Yellow's been DJ, here. Yeah, um, Kid Frost's son's been. You know, just like uh, Mellow Manasa's son. Just like knowing that they're 
that their their sons or their daughters, whatever it is, are following in the musical footsteps and being able to meet them yeah. like they're trying to do their th- that, that's pretty trip. dope too you know like shit's a trip yeah, like huh? but yeah like any but like say like some of my favorite court like the dog pound all one of my all-time favorites and, and a big time outcast fan too uh the licks of course the alcoholic um and of course you know like it's pr- i know it's the answer that everybody gives but tupac and you know all the stuff from the death row stuff you know i was into biggie um yeah, yeah nas nas is definitely one of my favorites too like yeah yeah and uh you know what oh out of out of solo mcs i i can't help it man i like jigga man care what anybody says and then i've always been a uh cube ice cube everything oh, he's yeah, done definitely ice cube I, ice cube and jigga like i would literally i would love to chop it up with them and an interview whatever it might be just to pick their brain because yeah. those are the kind of people uh creatives that i've always looked up to as people that can create outside the box but still remain the most relevant in the box too so um but also um you know who oh big daddy kane uh, one of oh my yeah. all th- and ll cool j mm-hmm. two of my all-time favorites and kane man still one of the best performers in my opinion lyrically like he's got the dance moves he keeps the crowd hype he's smooth with it all that shit man combination of those things is is what makes the the yeah. greats oh and i didn't mention earlier one of my other favorite shows to host was Rock Him, man. Yeah, that's the right. God that MC. The, that was an honor to host that show. And, and who, uh, who shout that out that to uh, Sullen, or, uh, shout out to AEF Productions, AEF man. Productions, that's yeah, right, yeah, the homie Martin. That, yeah. that was good too. And, and a lot and of just, good, lot of hey, bro, a lot of good connections. You know, we don't harp on no negative here. We ain't gonna do that ever. But um, we've made a lot of good positive and good family connection yeah. through this hip-hop oh, definitely, thing definitely. Bro, you like you know I mean? and a lot of the you know the people that are part of this team are djs and stuff you know they become like family to us you know so oh yeah so you know we've made All a lot day. of and even, even some of the mcs that i grew up listening to like somebody like like uh shout out to capital i man of the mexican yeah, uh, man, yeah i was a big fan of theirs and, and man he's cool as hell he, like i feel like he's one of my homies now like, we got the interview with the <laughs> with sinful there too <laughs> like the original mexicans crew oh yeah We've done some cool shit, man. It's, it's pretty the dope. Gino XL interview, another good interview that we had. Chilling with the, the Gonzalez brothers, you know, the Psycho Realm. So, yeah, and Both of them are the homies. And stay man. tuned for it. You know, we're going to be getting them here and, and, you know, talking a little bit more and getting more in depth with them, too, you know. Yeah, you know what? On this show, I don't want to really announce who some of the guests are going to be yet. Um, we'll just do that as we go because we got a dope flyer and everything, you know, dropping, too. But um we'll we'll just do it like this and you guys just stay tuned i hope you guys you know do tune in and i'm gonna make sure like i'm gonna actually go out of my way a little bit more than i usually do because it's my thing is like all right man you guys see what i'm doing you guys still can't support and that but i'm gonna actually go a little more in some of the fam some of the homies like hey dude go check that shit out man go listen to it and you know what and always there are people that you know shout out to the people that do there there are always people that will reach out all, yeah, all the yeah, time yeah, and man. say, hey, what you guys are doing is dope. Keep doing it. And, you know, and there's times, maybe there's people that don't always look at social media. Maybe you don't feel like, you know, like that they're saying, hey, like I checked this out. But there's, there's people that don't even bother with that. But they do watch the show because sometimes oh, yeah. I'll, I'll run into people somewhere and they go, hey, I heard you guys talking about this. I seen this interview with so-and-so. So, you know, like like the fact that it's still around, and, you know, and, and uh, people – recognize and you know and give us and that a, you know and a lot of artists have linked through our show yeah. too whether they were guests at the same time or heard another one saying something about respecting their craft and then they end up working together so we are the link whether people admit it or not we've we've linked a lot of shit together man and oh, yeah. and a lot of podcasts and shows have come um after in those 10 years and not knocking none of them but we're still going and and now this is the new branch off right here the rabbit season podcast we've had this in the works for a while but it's here now and let's get it so let's go man hey uh current events man this is uh, again we don't want to make any excuses and stuff but um part of this is what slowed down the process of getting this show going um with the quarantines and all the pandemic pandemic social injustice and different things going on and curfews and lockdowns and all the stuff we've been enduring in this 2020 has definitely taken a toll. And, you know, I wanted to say, Shay, like right off the bat, we were going to record like a couple nights ago, but I literally went and for, I think this was my late father's day gift, but I ended up getting shout out to my lady, but we got a, I got a fish tank that I've been wanting for the living room. And, uh, and I told you, you know what, dude, I need to relax. Like, 
This is kind of like like everybody has their own therapy of keeping sane. Mine's like I'll watch movies, I'll listen to music, I concentrate on working on our show and our podcast. Mine is smoking weed. Yeah, <laughs> I, I play with I, that. Yeah, I fit that in. Uh, of course, playing with my daughter and my stepsons. Like I gotta fit in time with the family. Of course, that's important on my list. But this was kind of like a therapeutic thing. Like even doing my yard. Like. You've even seen, Shay, this is weird for me. It's just, I don't know if it's an old age thing or what, but like I'm into like, I plant plants in my yard, like, and I, and I make sure they don't die. Like I take care of them and I, and I, and I trim them and like, <laughs> so he feeds I, birds. Yeah. I take care of our fucking yard. Like all this stuff. We have like a bunch of animals. These are all the things I'm just mentioning these. Cause these are all the things that have keeping me sane in my own world or whatever. But like, we got to tortoise a hamster a, a a dog a cat we now have a fish tank um and that's like why honestly like i was putting together my fish tank and it's again it's it's therapy for me it keeps me calm and even watching the fish is just something to calm and i hope everybody out there before we get in any more stuff is doing their best to stay positive stay calm keep your mental health up but also try to stay in man i know people don't take it serious some people do. Um, this is the second wave of it, which they even told us was coming. But if we would have been more precise and compliant in the beginning, maybe it would, the second wave wouldn't hit so hard. Um, and but even, yeah. even uh, staying in doesn't even mean stay in necessarily. Like, go in your backyard, like, set up, like, a, you know, yeah, chill outside, like, outside or your own house. And or that's, even that's, that's staying at home. Go so outdoors and hike somewhere, but don't, you why know, do you, not, why do you got to do it? Yeah, why do you got to do it at an event that's posted on a fly? Like, you don't have to go where 400 people are neck and neck with each other. Like, you, you know what I'm saying? Just Everybody's like half naked. And yeah, dude, and breathing on each yeah, other. Yeah. And but uh, one of the things, like, I, I don't get, like, what's going with, with with everything that's happening today is, um, you know, it's like all these people are, like, coming out of the woodwork as far as, like, the, the fucked up personalities that they, they have. Like, um, like, w like, you know, okay, one of the things they recommend, okay, let's wear a mask to try to, spread, you know, prevent either you spreading something or having right. So everybody all of a sudden has become an expert on everybody's a, a scientist so, like, uh, and, and i don't get it and it's like so doctor now people are going like real real far like to not wear the mask and, and they're and they're they're becoming disrupted and they're and they're like uh, there's even somebody that you know there's a security guard was shot at a thing for asking someone to put a mask on you know and it's like is it really that serious like, yeah it's uh, not and and it's not and here's the thing most of the people that are on that level though i mean seriously if you look at even you can see some of their posts is like they only care about themselves. Like, if yeah. all the attention has to be on them or else, like... And, and I think and this pandemic has disrupted that attention. Yeah, it's like, taken so. away attention from themselves, and, and they're not having it. But, no, but it's crazy. All these people, there's all these people, like, in different... They're actually protesting, like, not wear a mask. Like, I need to get a haircut. Like, there's bigger things. Like, people we know now are actually... It's hitting home, and people are seeing... People are getting sick. Like, this is a real thing. And, and whether it's not you don't believe in it or not why don't you just show enough respect for another human being that you at least care about their well-being like what if you do have it and you're just asymptomatic which they call is like you don't show the powerful symptoms but you might still have it and you which means you can still spread it so um why not just do that out of courtesy for other human beings just like when you're driving like if you're gonna turn right or left use a blinker let those people know it's the same thing it's just a courtesy yeah. thing man and People get too bent off, you know, taking their rights. And I get it, man. It's an inconvenience. Trust me. I mean, I fucking hate that. I'm, I'm used to going to shows, yeah. slapping hands with people, man. And, I mean, you know what? The thing I don't miss, though, is, like, uh, if people get too close and want to breathe right in your face all the time. At least this at least made it okay yeah, to go, no. step back, motherfucker. Yeah, I don't like, mind, I don't mind you know, being at a distance in a line, really. Yeah, me I either. mean, it makes a line look like it's longer, but it's really not. or just kind of spread out a little, but yeah, it's, it's not that big of it. It's know. not that big it's of it. It's better, either. actually. <laughs> and you know what's crazy, Shay, is we've seen it, but even with people we know, is like, um, it's like on a whole other level. Like, if people don't agree with them, like, they'll take it as far as the, like, unfollow their friends or or they'll post something aiming like calling people sheep because they believe oh, in something yeah. that they don't believe in and yeah. it's like you know what until all this is said and done 
We don't know. Yeah, to be honest, we're all sheep. We yeah, all we, we yeah, all have a go- we all yeah. have a government. Nobody knows what's really Everybody, going on. Nobody they, does. They know where we live. They they we 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 clock into a job. Most of us, uh, we're all sh- like basically we don't. None of us get like, to do have it. Seen that meme oh, none of us get to do exactly what we want. So go ahead. <laughs> have you seen that like that meme? Of <clears throat> that people are like the conspiracy theory. Oh, they're getting your information through these apps or whatever it is, or they're taking facial recognition of your face. Yeah. Okay. Well, guess what? When you were born, you were assigned with a number. Yeah. So a social security number. That's your number. They already assigned. They already know where you are. They already know who you and are. And guess what? That's it. You, already, you, you have an born, ID. You have a driver's license. You have an address. You have a phone number. Yes. Guess what? You're identified. Yeah. I'm sorry to tell you guys, but you know, with these people. It's almost like they're they feel like they're cult leaders or something like oh, if, yeah. if everybody that follows them they, on their social media, they take it to the next extent. If you follow me and they take it literal, like you're my followers, like, no, dude, some of these guys are just homies. They want to support what you're doing. Yeah. They're not your followers. So if they don't believe what you believe, you don't hate on them like. That's just what they believe. A motherfucker wants to wear a mask and don't believe that you think it's a conspiracy. I'm sorry, dude. What I'm wearing believe, a mask. It's like the sources that you sh- choose to believe that you subscribe to, whether it's some kind of some YouTube channel or some documentary. If that's the source you trust, that's the source you trust. But it doesn't make anybody else uh, wrong. wrong because they don't yeah. uh, because they and saw it, something else that they believe. And if the source you so, trust yeah. is, you know, orange or whatever, like, yeah. you know, racist guy, like. Um, that's the source you trust. That's cool, but it doesn't make everybody else wrong. And here's the thing I want to um, encourage uh, uh, Shay that we've even talked about is everybody. I know I've done it. I'm not going to just be a hypocrite and just say it, but I've done my research. I do my own research. I, I, I look at both sides of the coin and then I determine what I want to believe. Yeah. And then I determine what's right for my, not just me, for my family, but I, I talk to my family about these things and we chose to stay in and not be going out to these big events and you know because actually one of my stepsons is is uh he he's asthmatic Mm -hmm. so um that's a higher risk and same thing with me you know my girlfriend she has you know she's she has a heart issue too so i'm you know i try not to you know i go to work i wear a mask the whole time and that's it pretty much i come here and but you and i wear a mask (laughs) at my regular (laughs) shit too shay and what's wrong like so if we do that why can't people go and to a store for an hour in an air conditioned store and put your fucking mask on for a fuck yeah. you know what i mean yeah because that's the thing that how long are they plan on being yeah. out like like do you also you can't just put it on for those few minutes you're gonna yeah. be in the store like when you go home take it off take it take, get naked at home if you want yeah but you know just just wear the mask when you when you, you know that's it. go like, you know what when you get home lick the fucking rim of the toilet if you want i mean you believe what you believe but you know, you, no one has to be involved in that. And if they don't believe what you believe, it doesn't make them wrong or a sheep or man, just get off that stuff, please. None of you guys. I don't know anybody. I don't I don't think that I follow any. I mean, maybe I do. I hope I do. And if I don't, I should. But actual doctors and scientists and, you know, maybe they'd have more insight than some yeah. of these people that are fucking believing whatever the or fuck. some of those people that are in those in the front lines, in the hospitals, you know, the nurses, the yeah, they're wearing, that are seeing hey, they're wearing pretty yeah. damn near fucking uh, uh, war gear, bro. Oh. They're in, they're in multiple layers of clothing and masks, and they work eight, what, ten to twelve hour shifts, bro. And if if they can handle that, I don't understand why someone can't just go to the store and put it on for. Uh, an hour and to the anti maskers, like, uh, it's one of the things they always ask, like, okay, so you don't think it does anything? You think it's worse for us to wear it? Then um, so are you okay when you go in? If you go in to have a surgery, you don't think you're the doctor that's operating on you should be wearing any mask or anything or any yeah. gloves. All right, cool. Yep. Then all right, you're right. Then tell them. Yep. Just go ahead, take the mask. And you know what? It's uh, I'm sorry to say, but uh, if like I go up and just sneeze in your face <laughs> with us with no masks, pretty high risk that you're probably gonna inhale something I just sneezed in your face, but. If first of all, if we stay a distance from each other, which should, people should do anyways, just keep your fucking hey, motherfucker, stop getting all up in someone's grill, dog. <laughs> Unless that's your chick or yeah. some shit. Hey, but um, uh, you know, if you have a mask on, and I sneeze, it's less chance. And then if I have a mask on, you have a mask on, and I sneeze, it's less chance. And if we're six feet apart, it's even less chance. And, you know, it's just sometimes you have to break it down on that basic level for cats. Yeah, and the anti-mask, the other thing is they say, oh, 
um, well, what about, you know, if you're wearing pants and you fart, how come you can still smell it? That means the pants aren't holding. Okay, yeah, but if they shart, like a med, that's not going to hit you, <laughs> right? You, you might smell it, but the shart is not going to hit you. <laughs> I don't know. Some of these cats, I think they want shard. And they, they like getting sharded on. I don't know. Dude. Hey, hey, but you know what? <coughs> on a positive note, though, like, shout out to the people that are, you know, no matter what the situation they do, make sure they wear a mask uh, all out. Like, have you seen some of the ones? I've seen somebody, like, somebody was wearing, like, a, ta- a maxi pad on their face. <laughs> somebody wore, like, a bra. Like, hey, they, hey, hey do what you got to do. And like, you see, and you you see to, the you know? people, like, they'll be driving in the car by themselves in their own car with a mask. Like, okay, who are you going to get him? Like, who's going to infect you? Yeah. Or uh, you see somebody with a bottle, like, a milk jug bottle over their head. Like, they, hey, they go, people, some people go, oh, hey. Hey, so <laughs> moral of this story is, dudes, man, you social media savages that, you know, you got all these people that you really legitimate think are your followers you know with quotations i'm holding up um bro sometimes people are just supporting and they like you as a person or whatever so i I think people just need to lighten up if if everybody doesn't agree with you that doesn't make them completely wrong um like but on on one note i take on that too um like everybody can have their own opinion on the way they choose to go about things but um Bro, like if you're straight out racist, you know, there's still hope for you. At least try to improve it, man. I, I like here's one of my goals, Shay. Like all the time, like I think I'm a like I'm a pretty good person, bro. Like I, I treat people with respect. I help people. I do um like certain things that are like not not I wouldn't say just raising awareness, but like hopefully raising funds and stuff to help the less fortunate. And I do, I try to do my part and I treat people with respect. I have integrity and all that stuff, bro. But um, one thing I've always still tried to do is is be better every day. Yeah, and that's whether exactly. it's me being impatient, like sometimes I jump to conclusions. There's different things. And, I, and I've tried to get better all the time and improve those things. So I'm not like, I, I love everybody, dude. I like chopping it up with everybody, dog. I really do. Like that's what I feel is like one of the best conversations is just seeing the difference in people's yeah. and cultures and learning and, from them and too. learning from. But that's the thing: people don't want to sit back sometimes and listen yeah. and learn. And everybody's too busy talking. Go me, 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 me. They don't have time to like like listen to what the fuck somebody's trying yeah. to tell you about themselves, yeah. bro. And one of the things too, like I always like try to like, I mean. It, if you are if you are racist at all i mean i hope you're not if you're listening but one of the things is like if you're you know if you you, everything everybody goes through the same things that you do like um you know like what no matter what color they are where they come from like like everybody like loses a job or everybody um gets you know might hurt get hurt get a car accident might get through a breakup might lose a child and different things like that everybody they go through that so if everybody's go- going through the same thing, we're all in the same struggle when you look at it. Mm-hmm. So there's no reason to look any- anybody any different because, you know, like you might be in the same exact boat as that person and even though you don't look at anything like them or whatever. It and is, especially, you know. like, I'm going to say it, bro, like, people that really know us, like, um, you know what? Um, my dad is white. Our mom is Mexican. And we've never grown up in a place of privilege we've always been you know in a struggling household you know uh what do they call it middle to poverty level or whatever i don't know what the fuck we're labeled as but um so i've never experienced any type of like privilege and stuff except for when i did have have homies i've had different homies and and i've seen the difference and the difference in where they go and where they're accepted. And, and I've seen all these things, bro. But, um, you know, we've, we've never come from that. And, and, and I, feel, I feel like, you know, we're, we're half and half. But I feel like uh, black and brown definitely um, have the same struggle. And, and I would hope even some of the homies, um, this is a sensitive topic, but like, like w- the Black Lives Matter thing, I think some people took that sometimes in a in the wrong fashion is like don't hate on someone else's movement it doesn't mean that all lives don't matter it doesn't mean that it's just that saying that these are the ones they're immediately facing the struggle head on and and to be honest brown people are facing the same thing so if anyone should embrace that struggle it should be the brown side like us and and um so together we're stronger and i hope everybody can see through all these little 
I know these videos and different things going around and it's it's hard to watch trust me I mean I don't like seeing some of this shit but you know you also got to consider is someone else on the other end of it getting people to do these things or you got to consider the person doing it are they young minded um just not wise to the situation and and didn't have an older person to put them in the right perspective on what this shit really is we are in the same struggle and with that being said that's one of the things shay that i've done myself i i I haven't been able to be on the front lines of these protests um i have to work and support the family and you know and there's no making excuse i do what i do and i and i handle my business so anybody can come back at me and say it but what i am doing is I'm educating myself more. I will be educating more people that come in contact with me that I can, that are steered wrong. And I will be trying to be a better example to the youth. And with that being said, I hope everybody goes out that can and vote in November. Don't just worry about presidency. We got to look at what's going on in our own cities and communities as well. Who's calling the shots of policing and the judges, the and the judges, and district attorneys, and stuff. All like that, that. it's all their, hat, their, their history. The proposition, it's all important. So uh, mm-hmm. I hope we can encourage that. So and one of the things, uh, just to uh, go out to your point about the, you know, the Black Lives Matter, the people that say all lives matter. The, the best analogy that I've I've seen, there's actually two. Is like one is like okay, um, let's say you go down the street and you know there's one house that's on fire, it's about to go down, and you know the fire department comes out. See, that's the house that's on fire. That's the one that matters. You, all those houses do matter, but that's the one that's on fire. That's the one that they have to put out right now because that's the one that's struggling. The other ones are fine right now. So th- I think that that's like a great analogy like that, that I heard about the, you know, when people uh, try to throw out, oh, all lives matter. That one, and I heard there's a biblical one actually too, and like um, the sheep herder had to look for the, the sheep that got away, and then now the other sheep are going, what about me? well you're not the one that's lost it's that one so you know just going into that we want to get too deep and all that but i'm just trying to say man be a decent human being have some integrity and respect for your fellow human beings don't just care about yourself and going and partying we'll have plenty of time for all that man just let's get each other safe and get back out and do what we used to do man at least as close to it as we can and um you know for those people out there that are gonna say i don't you know um this is the way they're going to keep us and you're you're not woke and yet, yes i am i know the possibilities yes i do i just choose to be a positive human yeah, being and not a piece of shit yeah, exactly. so not a sheep for other people i'm not a sheep no. i'm just not a piece of shit and speaking so. of that too like you know people want to be called a sheep because there maybe there might be sports fans but hey man i for one personally i'm happy that sports are back and i think a lot oh, of people hell are. yeah i think hell it's, yeah. it's a and people want to say oh it's a response no, it's not. I mean, if you have like a real short attention span and you're not very like smart, then okay, then you're distracted by one little thing. But I mean, I could watch a game and not completely be oblivious to everything that's going on in yeah. the world. That's not what that yeah. means. But sports is something that be- brings people together. You know, it, like those teams are bonding and people of different races and stuff like that. They come from different struggles. And it's know, the so competition, yeah, the, the friendly competition. competition. Yeah. You respect your competitor whether you win or lose. It's respect for each other and what each other does. And just like the world works, and that's what sports is. And I'm glad it's back too, man. Shout out to my biggest team ever for anybody that don't know, Lakers all Lakers day. Lakers. Back. Back. Maybe yeah. they'll put an asterisk, but who cares? They're going to win Who cares? It. <laughs> Get it anyways. Hey, yeah. but, you know, um, that's the thing is is Lakers is my main shit. Um, out of everything, um, basketball, football, and baseball, the three mains for me, but um, Lakers all the way. Like, uh, I even put that around my bump, like my uh, – my license plate, like. Well, you have the tattoo. You know I'm saying they can probably see it right oh, there on the thing. Yeah, maybe you can see, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, um, Lakers, man, on mine. So I'm happy basketball is uh, back. And it's, it's crazy. It's entertaining for me. But isn't it crazy the way it is now? Like, uh, can you imagine? Like, w- there's nothing. This is not something we could have imagined. Basically, they're they're in a bubble, right? The NBA bubble, uh, basically, or they're calling it also a campus. It's like a, it's almost like the summer camp, like those old basket, the basketball camps when they go to when they're youth. Like basically, they're going away for a while. They're going to be there. They're not going home. Uh, they're qu- like basically confined to this area for all this whole time. Hey. It's crazy. Hey, and you know what? But it's it's not it's not any less entertaining for me. I still see no, them no, competing. The, c- the crowd sometimes adds some extra that we don't need. But the crowd is good. Don't no. get me wrong. But most of the times, you know that 
especially in those NBA arenas like Lakers, man. It's all Hollywood cats in the front. Oh, yeah. um, you know what I'm saying? Just to get on camera. Um, they ain't really hardcore fans like that, man. So I mean, It's always about that crowd reaction. But um, to me, it's not even that with no crowd. To me, the crazy thing is everything is being played in the same place. All the games. Yeah. No traveling, no going to different arenas in different cities. Might be better on their bodies, though. Yeah, yeah you that's know? true. And you know what? Shout out to baseball's back. Um, football's coming. Um, yeah. The thing is, is let yeah, it's freedom. And I want to uh, just say one more thing, too, is um, kneeling or for the national anthem is not in any way disrespecting the country or the people that fought for it. I hope people, I hope they've gotten that out of their head by now. It's just an injustice and that's a peaceful way to protest um, the injustices without um, going out and doing anything violent, hurting anybody. It's just to bring awareness and sometimes that needs to be had because look at, since all this stuff's happened, look at all the changes that have been made for the mm -hmm. positive. So let's keep going that way, everybody, man. Let's keep it positive, man. Hey, uh, sports teams for you, any favorites, any favorite sports? Of course, the Lakers uh, like all day, like, like since I, was, I remember that I was a Laker fan and of course uh, I'm a big Raider fan. And uh, you know, people are probably, you know, I'm gonna get a lot of hate, but uh, I'm an Angel fan. More, but I, you know, I don't hate the Dodgers, but I gotta say that you know uh, I watch the Angels more than I watch the Dodgers. You gotta say, yeah, and and uh, same here. And you know what? Um, and I'll I'll tell the true story of me personally is because um, um, our well our our dad rest in peace, um, who also by the way served in Vietnam, and came back like I'm um, wrecked from that I'm gonna be honest with you guys man I've had many conversations um he literally was again I wanted to join the service my dad like literally almost wanted to disown me um at the time I ended up going a couple different routes and didn't go that route and this is no disrespect to anybody because I respect everybody the fullest that has served for our country and what the morals and the core stands for I, I believe that but my dad um, something affected him coming back from there. I'm gonna be real, and um, it, it, it's kind of crazy, but that's kind of steered a little bit of my direction. Um, but I want to say, um, rest in peace to Pops. Um, and and he, he kind of, I guess, steered. I, I don't know exactly where I was going with the whole thing, man. I lost it now, but um, it, it's that. It's it, it's that I marijuana affects the been able myself at least these last few years to dig a little deeper and not be so stubborn and try to see different sides of the coin and um and uh see different people's opinions but i still am doing my research and getting my best um uh education to myself i guess you could say and then make a decision from there but yeah um pops rest in peace to him um, it was pretty dope because I remember before he passed, we got to take him to a ZZ Top concert, oh, his yeah. favorite group <laughs> of all time. Yeah. And he was literally buried in his concert shirt because all the family thought that would be best. You know what I'm saying? And uh, so I, I wanted to, to, to shout out to Pops. I remember, remember at the concert, um, too, I went to go ask like one of the guards, hey, which way is it to the, you know, the concession stand or, or the, you know, the merch stand just real quick. And then. He see me. He see me, and he comes. <laughs> hey, do you know what's going on? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I, I got it, Dad. I already found out. Like, Dad was pretty <laughs> faded, yeah, dog. Yeah. He was, you know, what's going. He was like, twisted. Yeah, I got it. No, hey, and at the time, out. we had some bomb weed, dog. We, I remember all the old folks around us, dog, were blazing up, and then we started passing our shit, and they were like, "Oh, this is some good oh, shit." Yeah. Dog. yeah, we had the bomb, bro. But I guess what I was getting at is that is. In sports, please, people don't think it's a disrespect to the flag or anybody that served the country. Yeah. This is a way of to peacefully protest, which is our our right in this country, uh, our amendment right to to do this and peacefully protest the social and racial injustices that are going on. And and most people know, even people that are not affected by it, they know this is a real situation, and it really is happening. Yeah, well, if you've seen like too the Dodgers opening day, um, like you know a lot of them were. Um you know, they were kneeling, even some of the white players. But the thing is, they still had their hats off over their heart. Yes. Respecting. So, but the kneeling, like you know, like in other countries, they kneel before their kings. It doesn't seem like it's a disrespect if you're kneeling before. Like, so it's, it's not really. A, I mean, if you were to straight hey. just sit there and not do anything, if you just sat down and not, 
that's that would be disrespectful, you know, like, but, but they're actually still acknowledging it. They have their hats acknowledge off. Acknowledge and acknowledge what's know? going right. on. Everybody that fought for our country, right. my utmost respect to you guys. And I, I appreciate you guys, including my father, a couple of my uncles, my cousins. Like, I got some of my closest the homies, homies yeah. man, their, sons. their sons following in the footsteps. Ain't nothing wrong, but let's just stick with our core beliefs. Let's yeah, have yeah. Thank respect, you. value, and integrity for each other, man. Real talk, and let's see. We're almost done with this show, but here's a, uh, something else I wanted to get into real quick. Uh, you know, well, we were speaking on sports. Before we get into your favorite sport, I think, of all time. Maybe <laughs> I'm wrong. But I want to. this is a random thought, and I'm probably going to have these every week. But So I cut myself at work the other day like on a blade like a no it was a screw that went all the way through this thing and i didn't realize it cut myself and i went to go like uh put a band-aid on they had the first aid kit washed it sprayed it everything the band-aid was so fucking hard to open and i always wonder like why are the band-aids so hard to fucking open and i and i know they have to be sterile inside i get it but sometimes there's not other people around and i want to save myself before i bleed to death sometimes the blood is just straight (laughs) squirting uh. So t- I just wanted to, I just didn't want to bleed to death. So I fucking put on, but anyways, uh, let's go into it. Speaking of bloody messes. No, no, but no, but you ever know, there's another one. Like, uh, you ever notice like what it was something that you normally do really easy, quick, right. But when you need to really hurry and do it, if for some reason you're just like, wait, I can't, I can't like, uh, you know, like say somebody's like dying of thirst right in front of you and you have to open this water bottle and like, for some reason you can't open it easier and it's taking you a little bit longer and it's like <laughs> i mean that, that's just an extreme example but you know. <laughs> hey yeah but you happen to be bleeding out your jugular <laughs> vein or something like i just want to patch it till the paramedics get here uh, hey so look your favorite sport wrestling bro look i used to watch wrestling back in the days and i was all into it hulk hogan all the motherfuckers like um but you still watch it to this day and there's yeah. a lot of people that do yeah. um i wanted to ask well I'll say because I'm old school with it, but Hulk Hogan was one of them. I know he ended up doing some pretty weird shit later, but that's beside the point. Um, Junkyard Dog used to be dope. Oh, yeah. um, you know, tag teams, I remember, like the British Bulldogs and uh, oh, yeah. the Killer Bees were dope. And, oh, and especially the Hart Foundation. Me, in my opinion, like Bret Hart is probably, the, what did he say, the greatest there ever will be, the yeah. greatest... But I I think he is probably best one of the greatest. Best was best there ever will be. Th- that's my opinion, and I'm not fully schooled in it just because I don't still watch it. But no. go ahead, man. Who's? No. Well, first of all, like um, to to for the record, it's not my favorite sport. Basketball <laughs> is, but but wrestling. Are is you a, sure? But, but wrestling is an entertainment. It's a sports entertainment. Okay. I know it's not a real sport. I know, like people I are gonna go, hey, do you know it's fake? Watch no, them. I, I get a bunch of messages. Hey, I you know was just gonna fake? say. I thought, <laughs> did you know it was? I mean, is it real? Well, well actually, you know, when I when I first started watching it, I thought it was real, but I was probably like uh, maybe like in fourth you know grade what? or something but but when it fuck all the <laughs> dumb shit shay the the injuries and the athleticism are real no, i don't no, care what anybody but says. i mean but i just thought that like they really hated each other and yeah, stuff like yeah. that but, but they're actually real co- they're actually co-workers and they you know they chilled after but but the thing was uh i remember my my stepdad my mom's husband had, had told me hey you know it's fake and I, and I didn't even believe him at first and i'm like oh man but then you know what i still watch it to this day so uh you know i just appreciate the the you know the whole the whole sport with the athleticism and the acting and everything and the stories and you know they have to write it all out and all that but uh but yeah i will say if i had to pick the top five for those wrestling fans out there hulk hogan has to be because he's what got me into uh listen to i mean to watching it in the first place so for sure i know he wasn't the greatest but but he still is the one that got me into it uh brett the hitman Hart is another one um uh, i gotta say uh R- randy macho man savage it was great and then uh you oh know, yeah i forgot him um and then honestly um yeah and brett the hitman just one of my favorites just because of his in-ring work and then um uh, honestly it, it's kind of a tie for me between the rock and stone cold steve austin but i think the rock edges it out just because he's such a amazing entertainer and even to this day the stuff like oh yeah everything he hey does, but he's one steve, of those dudes nobody could hate steve F, austin nobody, like, like dude the charisma they used uh, to bring and then like remember coco beware oh and, yeah but there's just certain <laughs> there's cats. Always, yeah there's yeah, a lot they, I mean, even people like now like you know there's still some of the ones that are still around are the are the ones that are my favorite just because they've been there long like uh ray mysterio and people like that like um you know he's still around doing his thing he doesn't even look like he aged at all uh, you know, but like uh, stuff like that. But it's crazy because they kind of were the ones that um, kind of led the way to these other sports coming back because 
th- th- like they never interrupted their their show. They they kept the stories going. Yeah, um, yeah. They yeah. started they started doing matches in empty arenas. Uh, then they started doing um, matches that were like pre-filmed, where they would do it at a spot where it looked like it was whole, all like filmed like a movie type of thing. And, 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 and you know they they innovated it in that way. And you know and it's that, still going though. Yeah, that's, that's for what, sure. That's what's crazy about it. Yeah, it's a trip. Hey, show let, show let's uh, tail this down and uh, you know. It's my birthday today, so I want to go continue the celebration. I'm 100 and something today, and I want to celebrate the right way. Um, shout out to everybody that does support us and all that stuff. But the, the Rabbit Season podcast will be going. We'll, our plan is to drop every Thursday morning, be pre recorded, uh, but every week, and we should have our first guest coming in uh, for the next week. And we should be dropping this coming Thursday, which will be the, what is that, the 20. Uh, well, they're listening today, so <laughs> yeah, whatever day they're listening, that's when it's out. But anyway, yeah, July. I think it's July the 30th. 30th. Yeah. When you listen to this, yeah. I think it'll be the 30th. The day you're thank you. To it is the day that uh, it thank comes out. Thank you for doing that. <laughs> yeah. But today is pre-recorded. It is my birthday, and we'll have some new guests coming forward. Uh, man, anything else you want to get? Oh, do you want to? Uh, I wanted to ask you something. This is a segment we're going to be doing every week. It's called the non-fake news, and let's get to it. Okay, non-fake news. <laughs> That's it's, fucking deep. Uh, it's kind of a playoff, you know, like, um, you know, nowadays our, our supposed, uh, I guess the guy in charge or whatever, it has this new term called fake news. So anytime you hear anything negative, it's, it's fake. It's not real, right? Like, uh, but um, I have some stories here that like almost seem fake, but they're actually, um, they're actually non-fake news. But <laughs> like one of them... Um, well, you know, we were talking about the mask, how people are like, uh, the, what is it, the anti-maskers or whatever. Uh, somebody, I think it's actually, it was up somewhere up north in California. Um, like, uh, s- this lady went into a, this Verizon store, right? And uh, they, they, were gonna, they told her to leave because she wasn't wearing a mask. Uh, so what she do? She, she, she started peeing on the floor. So she peed on the floor of the <laughs> Verizon store. <laughs> because... <laughs> well, that'll make your point. Yeah, yeah, I guess that gets it across. Or either she had to go bad or she just... Or I think uh, maybe they told her, where's your PPE? And I think she took it the wrong way. Like, <laughs> <laughs> or it just pissed her off. I don't know. <laughs> she was really pissed. Oh, and, uh, another story um, in Russia, uh, there, a cat tried to steal cash from a bar. Uh, it's funny. And I see that they even uh, somebody even posted it on the Instagram. You just see the, the cat running with like a stack of wad of cash. I guess the cat was just some kind of like cat blur- burglar. I don't know what it was. <laughs> but... Uh, but luckily, you know, the um, the cat actually belongs to the bar owner. So, you know. Hey, there, there's a couple of cats in our hood. They, they come and steal fucking Pepper's food. Yeah, that's right. Shout out to Pepper. That's yeah. the cat. But, but uh, what's they, funny is, like, dude, but, like, luckily the, the, they own the cat because, you know, what they do to people in Russia, you know, for, like, it's, a, you know, it's way more harsh punishments for stuff like that. You know, who knows what they would have done to that cat. But, fucking but, poor but, <laughs> but I guess they'd actually made off with one, but somebody grabbed it from it. And then the second time it did it again. But I guess they were like fake bills that they had there. But, uh, <laughs> That's its thing, huh? <laughs> we got to hire that one. Fucking snatch oh, us up another one uh, in Las Vegas. So this, this guy, <laughs> they caught it on tape and everything. I think it was even on TMZ. This guy stole like a, a massive dildo from a, from Deja Vu in, uh, in Las Vegas. It was three feet and 40 pounds. Wow. <laughs> a dildo <laughs> called Moby. You know, I'm pretty sure that that's probably what they call it, the, like Moby. But they have like, like uh, it showed like he's even making down the, he had it, threw it over his shoulder and just took off down the street. He was even wearing a mask. Like he was wearing his mask. Oh, at least he was, yeah, sanitary. Yeah, he was sanitary. And uh, probably when he goes home to play with it, he'll, hopefully he'll put a condom on it. What's he going to do with it? Uh, <laughs> 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 probably against the penal code. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he made his own penal code. Fuck, dude. He's fucking, hey, man. Some of the times, I'm sorry, guys, but there's some weird motherfuckers out there, dog. Like, you know, to each his own, and we say we got to respect each other, but, you know, certain things I just don't get. But and then One more. Uh, this uh, the, f- the president in the Philippines had a press conference. He said, uh, make sure you wash your mask. And he said, uh, if you ran out of Lysol, just wash it in gasoline. He's like, oh, that'll kill that son of a bitch. <laughs> 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 I'm, wondering, I'm pretty sure he was probably, maybe he was imitating Trump or I something. Was, I, was <laughs> thinking, I was thinking one of, uh, one of his speeches about kneeling. Yeah. Oh, man, that guy. Hey, so we'll bring more. So like, hey, you know, with stuff. that being said, I, I know you guys can see that the stupidity is real. And uh, hopefully everybody do your own research. Keep uh, 
educating yourself, getting smarter, be better, man. Let's all try to be better and get along with each other. And let's all vote in November and try to make our way of living at least a little more close to the way it used to be because this shit is foul right now i know everybody agrees man i want to get out and and uh and have some fun again but we're making the best of it staying positive uh shout out again we're at the b-side studio man my uh producer co-host shay whitey thank you and uh dj clips co-producing and we got a lot of dope guests for you guys. That's right. Happy birthday, bro. Uh, thank you, everybody, uh, also for, uh, for listening. Uh, we'll have a lot, like, some more stuff coming soon. More stuff coming soon. Rabbit Season Podcast, live and direct, all up in your grill every single week. Let's get it.